Welcome to In Other Waters, a game by Jump Over the Age. Rather than describe it myself, I think I'll just read part of the official description because I think it does a great job. Play as an artificial intelligence guiding a stranded xenobiologist through a beautiful and mysterious alien ocean. That is all I needed to become interested in it. Uh, if you'd like to play this game for yourself, as always, I'll have links to where you can buy it in the description. Let's start a new game. I'm going to overwrite my current one, which I've played for just about five minutes. Just making sure everything was set correctly. Transitioning. I feel called out. Recovering last known log. Log recovered, dated the year 2189. User AN sensorium disabled. AN. There isn't any time left. This is going to be more restrictive than you are used to. But you are resourceful. I know you. I'm sorry, but I can't let them find you. I can't lose everything we achieved here. Something, something, can't read it. User disconnected. Hello? Is someone there? This is Dr. Ellery Voss. I urgently need all systems of this suit activating. I've been locked out, and I'm 20 meters below the surface here. I say again, this is Dr. Ellery Voss. Can any operator personas on this suit please respond? I can answer yes or no. Yes. Alright. Good. Operator, activate all systems. Pilot authorization granted. Okay, good. The dive panel is active. Current reading of 20 meters. Heading. I'm seeing the heading panel coming online. Excellent. Oxygen. Oxygen panel is up and rebreather functioning. I'm off reserve oxygen now. Power. Power panel is activating. Plenty of juice. Utility. Okay, utilities available. Let's see. Sampling, sample storage, terminal, and retrievals seem to be installed. Scan plus topography. Scan and topography readouts coming through. Looking good. You don't seem to know what you're doing. You're not an operator, are you? No. Then what are you? Why are you installed in the suit? Help me out here. I 
knew there was something strange about this suit when I got inside. It looks decades old. Look, uh, we don't have time for this. So whatever program or system you are, I need you to work with me. You seem to respond to voice commands, so that's a start. I... we need to head north. I'll explain once we get going, but right now I'm locked out of half the systems of the suit. Someone, somehow, has rewritten the permissions to only respond to internal messaging. That means you. So, I'm going to need you to take control. Let's get moving. Take me north, into the reef. Please. So, we can zoom in and out. It's going to be a lot to get used to, I think. This is where I stop playing, so I don't know anything past this point. It's really interesting how the game looks, isn't it? And how we're going to control everything. We're not exactly directly controlling or in the cockpit. We're just sending commands externally and we're just looking at the world based on what we see as, I guess, an artificial intelligence. It's a very interesting perspective. Depth 20 meters, yes. Uh, scan. Let's do a scan. Okay, there's something over there. Send out pulses. We can clear the scan. What does the uh, aiming of this thing do? What does that have to do with anything? Probably movement, I would wager. Um, let's check out utilities. Bio sample scan? Uh, I don't think we can do anything with that right now, because there's nothing to biosample, I think. Sample storage, nothing, of course. Terminal. Link. Uh, retrieval. Unknown region. Additional data required. Request retrieval of what? I'm not sure what that is. Okay. So how do I move? <laughs> um. Oh, hey. So we got this, and... Huh. Okay, so I can move this around with the left stick. And then the right stick does nothing. And then if I do a scan, now I can't move around the left stick until I undo and clear the scan, but I can move the right stick and do this. Oh, do we like just scan that directly? Southern Gully. Steep rock walls rise up towards the surface on either side. The floor is layered with pale sand. Okay, so now it's marked. Now we can choose to go there. So I gotta aim at it. Okay. Gotcha. Good. Whatever you're doing is working. Let's keep heading north. So another scan. There's something else. Narrow pass. A boulder fills the passage, blocking out the warm light of... Gliese 667. Uh, Gliese 667 CC's three stars. Yep, this sure is an alien planet. <laughs> I don't know what any of that means. Uh, and then... Go to movement. Here the passage opens out back into the dappled light of the reef's shallows. Soft currents. The softly flowing water is filled with glittering particles of organic matter. 
signs of a rich and thriving life all around. Yeah, we see some dots. I think that's life. Look, in the water. Are those spores? And those stalks to the west, they look like huge fungi. This is unbelievable. Actual alien life. How could Manet have kept this place a secret? I saw her notes at the base when I landed, and some telltale signs on approach, but here it is. The first extraterrestrial life humanity has ever discovered. I can't believe it. Oh, there's a bunch of things to scan. Bed of stalks. It's a creature. Fungal creature made up of a series of st Oh, these stalks are beautiful. I wonder how they feed, how they grow, how they communicate. This place, this planet, needs to be studied. Keep scanning creatures and I'll keep notes. Once we've gathered enough data, I can name and log each species. No matter what happens here, this is vital work. A fungal creature made up of a series of stalks and plates attached to the rock. Color ranges from dark amber to acid yellow. Southern Nursery. Protected by the ridges from the strong northern currents, this could be a safe haven for younger, softer species. Strange stalks. Beds of these creatures coat the pale rocks. Are these plants or animals? They're unlike any earth coral or sponge. This creature's external membrane appears to be made of layers of chitin, like earth arthropods or fungi. Um, can we collect samples? I think so. I don't seem to be able to do anything with that yet. Let's go to the strange stalks. Oh no! What were those creatures? They were hidden among the stalks. Quickly, try to get a scan. Agile creature. Striped with luminous colors, these flexible, flapping creatures move rapidly through the water with little effort. Those are such lively creatures, and so colorful, too. I'll start locking my observations. This creature's external membrane appears to be made of layers of chitin like Earth. Oh, that's the same description? Is that the same one? Oh, here we go. I'm seeing a complex pattern of contracting and expanding slits in this stalk's membrane. Mouths or sensing organs? Stalk patch. The stalks here are furred with spores which appear to have drifted down from the northern part of the reef. These colonies are producing a shifting hum. Perhaps it's a form of communication between individuals. Ah, see for this, um, for this creature, it says data gathered, like, 60%. So does that mean we can take samples of this? Once again, I can't seem to do anything. Perhaps we're not supposed to do that yet. Is that a different one? Oh, come back. Ah! There it is. Agile creature. 
appears to maneuver with a series of siphon jets concealed beneath their folded mantles. They're incredibly fast. Stock patch. Sample candidate. Among these spore-clogged stalks are piles of small stones. Could a creature have gathered them here, or just the currents? Bed of stalks. I'm seeing spores entering and exiting the slits on the surfaces of the stalk. Something is being exchanged. This is so cool. This is so fascinating. I heard, by the way, from, I think it was the description, said that it's a very relaxed and non-violent game. So, yeah, expect this vibe to continue, I think. It's about being curious and just exploring something really cool and alien. Oh, there's others. These creatures aggressively pursue certain spores but ignore others completely. Can they detect differences in mineral content? There was one more, wasn't there? These stalks are covered in spores of all sizes. Perhaps we can sample one of the larger ones? I'm in position. You'll have to take the sample. Open up the sampling utility. Okay. Ah, oh, so I gotta, yeah, move it around until we get to just the right point and hold it there. 5% fungal. Uh, do I press something now? Oops, I just switch categories. Uh, hello? We aren't going anywhere until you take a sample. I'm in position. Yep. Close the two clamps, then extract it. I'm confused about what I need to do, though. Oh, wait, what is... Hold on, what did I just do? I think I did it. I... I think I have to position two things, and I somehow position them both or something? We've got one. Biological samplers are vital tools for analyzing and understanding creatures. But this suit should allow you to deploy any sample back into the ocean. How about you test it out? Hold and drag it over to the central compass. Hold on. A stock spore containing a complex cocktail of minerals and compounds. It attracted creatures. Great, that's working as it should. Look, these creatures are coming for the spores. Why these ones in particular, I wonder? Perhaps different spores carry different compounds, each with a specific purpose or message. What do you think? Could the spores be a way of communicating between different colonies? Yes. It isn't that strange. Fungi on Earth form networks of exchange. Maybe these stalks do the same. Anyway, sorry, I'm not sure why I... Let's keep moving. The colonies seem to be broken up in individual patches and then larger groups over a wide area. What is it that dictates the reef's growth patterns? Sunlight? The flow of water? Whatever it is, it must be absent here. It's a silent clearing. Spore flow. Spores from the main part of the reef are brought into the southern nurseries here by a steady current. I think 
like I never went down here to the strange stalks. Uh, whoops. Uh. Oh, it was here that I didn't go to. Sampling available. Okay, let me learn how to use this for real. So I think I get that in the right spot. And then if I press down on the D-pad, it locks that side. And then the other side... Oh, I just need to lock both sides. I, I line it once, lock twice. Closing both of the clamp arms. Like the doctor told us. That makes sense. I'm really enjoying the interactions. Like the actual controls. And the way you fiddle around with stuff. It feels very tactile. Stock spore. Same as the other one. So, we could see some interesting interactions depending on where we release this. Should I save it? Eh. Let's release it. New species logged. Oh, because we've gathered enough data about the reef stocks. I'm uploading my initial notes. Let's call these reef stocks. We can classify this species in the lab. Fungal creature which communicates through sound and spores. An interlocking ecosystem seeded across the reef. Smooth boulder. This huge rock sits among layers of lichen. Could it have been thrown here during a volcanically active period in the planet's history? ask you something. Yeah. I've worked with AI programs before, but you aren't like them. They're predictable, programmatic, dull. Their intelligence allows them to log and process data. That's all. But you, you're different. I feel like you're alive. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Then you are different. I'm glad I'm not just imagining it. But what are you? And what are you doing in this suit? Northern current. The current running into the reef slows here, but further north the water whips down the rift with incredible speed. Long rift. Wide and long with sheer rock walls on either side, this deep rift channels unpredictable currents. Overgrown arch. This arch is covered in hardened stalks. Perhaps the slow current passing through brought their spores to settle here. Strong current. Flecked with spores, this water runs fast and hard. The suit can't push any further north here without better propulsion. Oh, I can't even go there. Too strong. Oh, there's something. There's some big things here. You see those? Also, I just love how this looks and how this sounds. The feel of turning this thing around and hearing it click, click, click as you move it is so satisfying. Hmm. 
large stalk. Static creature made up of one huge flexible stalk. Uh, these huge stalks are incredible. Each one a vertical ecosystem. They're leaking spores in the water as the fruiting bodies attached to their skin bloom. Unclear if swaying is due to current or is produced by the stalk's own body. Large growths. These larger stalks sway all around this basin. They almost resemble branchless trees bending in a storm. Another large stalk. Many of these stalks are leaking particles into the water as they sway. Are these spores or something else? Did you see that? The stalks responded to our movement. They extended as we passed through the arch. Perhaps it was the sound we made when we moved through? We should be careful not to get trapped here. This suit's power capacity is limited. The chitin of the stalk's membrane is very hard, but flexibility is given by a surface of overlapping plates. Feeding grounds. There's a lot of activity among the rocks ahead. Creatures are grazing on and living among the stalks forming a complex ecosystem. Look, over to the southwest. That stalk is totally calcified. Looks like a good sample candidate. Calcified stalk. This huge stalk is totally still. Its plates hardened into a rocky shell. Can it be revived? Or is this what death looks like here? Stock looks dead. Open up the sampling panel and we can extract some of the outer membrane. There's lots of dead material here, so we should be able to take multiple samples. Okay, so the chitin appears to be hardened with calcium carbonate. That could be useful if we need to boost our power. The suit's able to metabolize organic compounds to produce fuel. Just drag them to the power panel. The suit displays how much oxygen or power each sample can produce. No point wasting important samples. With these, we can keep one sample so we can analyze it back on the base and use the other for a power boost. Oh. Well, let's get another one then. Yeah, uh, it must be that little pink ring shown around power. Uh, drag it to the power panel. Boop. We use another one if we wanted to. I don't think it would do anything more. The plates of the stalk's surface, passing over one another, must be producing the distinctive hum that can be heard. These creatures must be related to the other stalks on the reef, but seem to have a separate purpose to the lower beds. It's safe to assume that the singing of these stalks relates to the communication between colonies seen elsewhere on the reef. 
overgrown paths. The space between the rocks here is thick with stalks. The elaborate patterns they trace across the reef are beautiful. Shelled creature. Mobile creature with a large translucent shell and four swimming appendages which it uses in a rapid rowing motion. These creatures have such beautiful translucent shells. I'll start logging something. I didn't read it fast enough. The forest path. The growth gets heavier as we travel north into the stock forest. Something about giving it that name makes it feel safer, more familiar. We named it. I've named these sing stalks for that strange hum they produce. What is its precise function, I wonder? These creatures glide among the reef stalks with great care and precision. They appear to be grazing on them. Bear Canyon. The rocks here are clear of stalks and other growths. Is their absence a territorial marker? Or just a side effect of the conditions of these waters? Agile creature. The relationship between these creatures and the stalks is unclear, but they camouflage themselves among the amber colonies. It's easy to, to think of this lit up portion in the center of the screen as the only thing we can see, but it's just a lit up portion of everything else we can see around it. A little bit easier to see if we zoom out. Cavern Edge. A large cavern drops down to the reef here. Its entrance is shadowed by the surrounding rocks. southern cavern. The water is still in the yawning entrance to the cavern. There are no signs of stalks or other reef life around the entrance. Oh, what is... What is that? That's for us to go deeper for the first time. Oh. Oh. Now we're at 28 meters. We're in a cave, it looks like. Stalk patches. The patchy sunlight coming through the broken cavern roof is enough to allow stalks to grow here, if that is what they require. We've already scanned these. Glittering stalk. Soft sunlight spills down onto a long, thin stalk stretching towards the light. A coating of large, glassy bubbles glitters on its skin. Sampling. But first. Tall stalk. A tall, bubble-coated stalk which sits among reef stalk colonies, covered in wide, irising pores. These tall stalks seem to watch over the smaller colonies... something-something. 
I really need to start reading the dialogue right when it starts. It kind of goes pretty fast. Oh, there's two samples. Three. These gaseous bubbles are intriguing. The interior gas is at an elevated pressure. If this membrane ruptured, the sac would screech as it depressurized. Is this part of the stock communication system we've seen across the reef? Wait. I have an idea. Try deploying one by that blocked tunnel over there. I want to see how the stocks react. Just drag one over. seem to do much. There we go. They retracted. These bubbles must be some kind of signal system. I'll call them shrill sacks for that squeak. We can use these to get through the heavy growth ahead. Let's get moving. Clogged tunnel. Stocks mesh across the cavern here, hardened into a near solid wall of tubes and plates. Blind corner. The cavern curves away in both directions here. It's hard to see the way ahead. So I guess you're wondering where we are heading. There's a way station just north of here, on a finger of this reef. I want to find it. My shuttle touched down just hours ago, at a floating research base to the south. That's where I found this suit. I'm here looking for a... for Dr. Mane Namura. Chasing a message. All the way from Earth. I must sound mad. Coming out here to a planet in the tail of Scorpius, just to follow a message. Wait, you do know where we are, don't you? No. But how? We're on Gliese 667CC, a supposedly unremarkable world, if it wasn't for all this life. Somehow the Exoplanet Extraction Corps must have passed it by. But how did Manet know to come here? Is that why she contacted me? To verify her discovery? But then, where is she? Look, let's find that way station. Then I can start piecing together what's going on. Thin Passage the cavern narrows here, and small eddies of water twirl in the silt. Cavern entrance. A current can be felt, drifting through the cavern entrance, bringing with it warm clouds of silt 